Hello everyone, my name is Matt Lamb and I've been asked to give my thoughts on the impact that COVID-19 is having on the events industry and the industry that you are studying. Now we have never seen anything like this in the 21st century that affects the world of events and really this is a first time in a wake-up call for the bubble that uh, that is events to now be burst well and truly. Now one, no one was ready for something like this which shows that actually we are a fragile industry and I personally think that this is going to create a lot of learnings that can only do better for the future, whatever it may be. Two, it highlights that hygiene at events needs to be more thought of. We have to understand hygiene is critical to understanding, um, you know, understanding that when people come together, they can easily share a cold. So what are we doing to combat that to make sure people don't get ill from the events? Last year, I went around the world in 80 events. I went to 26 countries to understand what are events all within the space of eight months and two weeks. There was only ever four events that I saw anything to do with health and hygiene at the events. And for me, now looking back, that was quite quite surprising to see but actually now when you look at it and you look at the bigger picture and look at what's happening um, you're actually kind of in shock that it was only four now we're going to probably see all 80 and and the rest will definitely have hygiene at the forefront of their planning the the the, the thing i say to you is where do you see the events industry going? Um, I think there's there's been a completely there's there's a completely change of message in the last two weeks. We saw events cancelling through moral grounds, which means that insurance and um, would not cover um, because they are cancelling through the the non pandemic at the time, um, having an impact on people's psychological buy in to be going to crowds of five hundred five hundred people and more. Um, they. The other element that we then saw was when people are being told to cancel. So in some countries, gatherings of 50 people and more, um, which includes in France and a lot of places in Europe, we they are, they are being told, which means that it's law and it's legal. And the government are not advising, but are, you have to. Whereas in the UK, what we're seeing is event organisers who are doing it because they don't want bad rep. Um, they don't want people to. Um, they don't want people coming and getting getting coronavirus um, just in case someone is ill and comes to the event and blah blah blah. But they were cancelling before the advisory came out, which means that, as I said, they are the insurance. But now the Scottish government is only given an advisory. The UK government still to come out with a 500 and more at gatherings. That's still to be officially announced. And it's not law. So, um, which means that we're not have, you don't have to cancel. We're seeing some tours, um, the Jason Manford uh, theatre tour. He's going ahead because he doesn't want the crew, the theatres and all these people to be losing out on income. But then, uh, the other element of it, Haymarket Theatre in Leicester has cancelled everything because they don't want the fear of just in case somebody with the coronavirus comes in. Now, from my experience of what I'd done last year, I, I, and, and I've been in touch with a few people that have been um, affected directly and who I met last year um, on my adventure, um, which is all on a blog, aroundtheworldnativeevents.com, but I can talk to you about that another day. They are saying that they have no idea what to do because if they don't work or they don't put on the event, they don't earn money, which means that business businesses, so some people are self-employed, like myself, we are not sure where the next paycheck will come. There's also another element of it, which is what is the future? And if I cancel the event, am I looking as though I'm jumping on the bandwagon? So right now is the best time to be studying events because you're able to then see the emergency procedures that aren't in place and some of the things that are in place to assist. Now, I think a couple of things. The government need to put in a fund to help self-employed or organisations that have small events. They have to help them immediately to make sure they survive. Secondly, I think there needs to be more training put in for freelancers to ensure that there is more job opportunities available for them in the next two years, just in case the events industry doesn't bounce back. Three, there needs to be a public campaign to get people back out of their houses because 
yeah, okay, some people might argue, well, actually, no, Matt, they, they've been stuck in, there's cabin fever, why would they want to go back out? Yeah, but they don't want to risk themselves by putting themselves in situations of 80,000 people or, or anything like that. And, 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 and on another case, we also need to understand that these people that are going ahead with events, are they actually doing themselves any good I don't think so. I, I, I think that they should be cancelling, um, especially when the advisory has now come out and especially now that we're seeing over 1,300 cases. I, I, what I would say is, for you, um, read everything you can from every different country. Look at the fact that Thailand are now putting in a leisure fund to help the tourism industry to try and boost up hotels, look at Australia, they're putting a two-week advisory of everyone in that's coming in to be in quarantine, which means that people that are just in for a week for an event actually can't do that anymore. Um, look at Canada, look how it's affecting places that actually don't have any cases. Um, and, and even look at like Vatican City, one, one event that happens every Sunday there is a mass with the Pope. That's now been cancelled. So now we're seeing impacts on religion. And of course, Easter is coming very shortly, which means that will there actually be a way of celebrating as we've seen in the past? Um, this is a time that we don't know what's happening. But whatever does happen, be at the forefront of it and understand the events industry right now is probably going through the biggest change we're ever going to see. Um, and that's from, from me watching, listening and, and talking. Um, and the more that you can um, see that and listen to it and take it in, the more that you can learn. Uh, I hope that was very helpful. I'm sitting in a car park, so I thought I'd do this quickly. Um, and yes, have a great day. We'll hopefully meet up soon when I can come out the bubble. Take care. Bye.